Welcome, welcome to story time. Today's featured story is The Brave Little Tailor. On a beautiful sunny morning, a tailor sat at his sewing table happily working away. As he focused on his work, a woman walked down the street and called out, Fresh homemade jam! Fresh homemade jam for sale! That sounds delicious, thought the tailor, and he bought every last jar. The tailor was excited to enjoy the fresh jam, and so he found a loaf of bread to eat it with. He spread the jam on the bread, looking forward to a snack. Just then, he glanced at the clock and realized that his time was running short. He had to continue his sewing. The tailor left his jam and bread and went back to work. Soon, the sweet smell of jam caught the attention of some flies. Oh no! As the tailor sewed, several flies flew over and buzzed around his plate. Hey! Hey! cried the sailor. Shoo! Get away from my bread and my jam! But the flies continued to buzz about. Desperate to get rid of them, the tailor took a piece of cloth from his work table and swatted at the flies. Get! Get out of here! Just get out of here! Squishing them all. When the tailor lifted the cloth, seven dead flies lay underneath. What an amazing feat! A real show of true bravery, he thought, very pleased with himself. The little tailor was so impressed by his own skill that he wanted others to know. He made a belt that fit right around his waist and on the buckle he stitched a large number seven with the inscription below that read, seven in one stroke. Wearing his new belt, the tailor decided that it was a perfect time to go on an adventure. He looked around to see what he could bring with him, but only found an old piece of cheese, which he placed in his pocket. As he stepped outside, he heard a bird rustling in the trees. He took it in his hand and put it in his pocket as well. I wonder what he's going to do with that bird and that old piece of cheese. The little tailor followed the road up the mountain. Excited by the adventure before him, his steps were light and nimble. When he arrived at the top of the mountain, there sat a giant. The little tailor bravely marched up to him and said, Hello there, giant. I'm looking for an adventure. Would you like to join me? Seven in one blow, said the giant. Upon seeing the tailor's belt and thinking that the seven were men and not flies. You must be very strong. Can you do this? He challenged, picking up a stone in his fist and squeezing the water right out of it. The tailor wasn't as strong as the giant, but he was more clever. Watch this, said the tailor, and he took the old cheese from his pocket and squeezed it until water dripped out, and the giant towering above him mistook the cheese for a stone. Oh, how clever is that? Not wanting to be outdone, the giant challenged the tailor again, this time to see who could throw a rock the furthest. The giant picked up a stone and threw it almost out of sight. The tailor laughed. <laughs> and reached into his pocket for the bird, which the giant mistook for a stone. When the tailor threw the bird, it flapped its wings and flew out of sight. Hmm. If you're so strong, help me carry this tree, grumbled the giant. With pleasure, said the tailor. Here, I'll carry the branches. I wouldn't want them to scratch you. This seemed reasonable enough to the giant, and so he turned around, picked up the trunk of the tree, and carried it over his shoulder. The tailor quickly scurried into the branches where the giant couldn't see him. He smiled to himself for being so clever and sat hidden on the tree as the giant carried both the tree and the tailor. Later, when they came to a cherry tree, the giant bent a branch and offered it to the tailor. But the tailor was too weak to hold the branch down and was launched into the air. The giant accused him of not being very strong, but the tailor had a quick answer. I was just, I was just a, avoiding um, hunter arrows. Let's, let's see you jump over the tree. The giant tried, but he got caught in the branches and it looked once more like the tailor had outdone him. You're so very strong and brave. Come. Come stay the night at my house, said the giant with a gleam in his eye. 
The tailor agreed and soon they came to the giant's house where the tailor was shown an enormous bed to sleep in. He crawled in and curled up under the pillow. That night, when the giant thought the tailor was sound asleep, he took a heavy club and broke the bed with a single blow. That should take care of that pesky little man, he thought, not knowing the tailor was safe and sound under the pillow. The following day, the giant went into the forest to meet some of his giant friends. The giant had forgotten all about the little tailor. That is, until the little tailor appeared before them. The giants were so taken by the surprise that they ran away in fear. The tailor laughed and laughed at the giants and then carried on. He walked for quite some time before he came to the courtyard of a royal palace where he decided to rest. He lay down and fell fast asleep. He soon noticed he was soon noticed by some people who read the inscription on his belt. Seven in one stroke. They thought they thought that the little tailor was a great warrior and soon even the king heard about the brave stranger. The king was very impressed and offered the tailor a position in his army. His army, which the tailor gladly accepted. If you kill if you kill two troublesome giants in the woods, I will grant you my daughter's hand in marriage and half of my kingdom as a reward, said the king to the tailor. The king sent a hundred horsemen with the tailor, but when the tailor arrived at the edge of the woods, he ordered the horsemen to wait for him there and entered alone. He found two giants resting under a tree and threw acorns at their heads. Boop, boop. Each thought, that the other was responsible for the blows. They became so angry that they fought each other and knocked each other out. The tailor returned to the horsemen without a scratch and showed them the fallen giants. They were astonished. However, the king was not ready, not ready to grant the tailor his reward and asked him to perform another heroic deed. A wild unicorn was loose in the woods and the tailor was to tame it and return it to the king. The tailor went alone into the forest and stood in front of a tree. And when the unicorn charged him, he jumped swiftly out of the way and the unicorn's horns was stuck into the tree, trapping it there. The tailor patted the unicorn and spoke to it gently to calm it. Then he freed it from the tree and rode it back to the castle. Voila, I'd say that's mission accomplished. The king could hardly believe it. He made a third request of the tailor. This time, the tailor returned to the woods to catch a wild boar. When he found the boar, he taunted it. The boar charged at him and the tailor ran into an empty barn nearby with the wild animal in pursuit. When the boar was safely inside, the tailor quickly slipped out closing the door behind him and trapping the animal. He did it. Weary, the king had no choice but to grant the tailor his daughter's hand in marriage and half, half of his kingdom. One night after they were married, the princess heard the tailor mumble in his sleep. This is this, this new fabric. Oh, will make a wonderful jacket. The princess gasped and sat up in the bed, her movement waking up the tailor. When he realized that he had almost revealed that he used to be a simple tailor rather than a hero, he pretended to continue mumbling in his sleep. Ooh, a man who killed seven in one stroke should have a jacket made of such fine fabric. The princess who had thought momentarily that she'd finally learned something about her husband's mysterious past, rolled over and went back to sleep. And so, with his sharp wits about him, the little tailor ruled as a good and clever king for the rest of his days. And that, that's the story of the brave little tailor. The end. Thank you so much for stopping by for story time. If you would like some more stories on my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.